So hello and welcome to this virtual session, which normally would take place physically in the form of our cool booth at Munich Airport. We want to try to replicate this booth online here. So in this session, my colleagues and I are extremely excited to tell you the story of what the Agile Design Studio means to us, and more importantly, how our customers can use it to enhance and streamline their workflows through collaboration and automation. So I'm Danny Tierney, I'm based in Munich, Germany, and I focus on visualization with VRED. And I'll be covering some topics today like NURBS ray tracing, virtual reality, and extended reality. Hi, I'm Robin Aldroyd, based in the UK, focused on Alias and VRED, and I'll be covering topics on CAST and Class A. Hi, I'm Simon Nagel. I'm based in Munich, Germany. I'm focusing on visualization with VRED. And today I'm covering Alias and VRED automation with VRED Core. Alias and VRED customization with Dynamo, scaling ray tracing performance, and sharing VRED data for review. Hi, everybody. My name's Daniel Wright. I am based here in Ingolstadt, and I look after Alias and Shotgun for automotive. And today I'll be covering toolkits with inside of Shotgun. But before we even begin to outline the intent of any given design program, it's imperative to define where the project data will be stored and tracked. Over the course of a vehicle program, thousands of assets will be created and edited. Communications in whatever form they take become nearly impossible to track. And the immensely time consuming task of searching really becomes counterproductive. On top of all this, multiple departments working together, some technical, some creative, some are just undisciplined in leaving a trail of breadcrumbs for their team members to easily find what their thought process was. Mainly, this should be as painless as possible. A simple, intuitive way for everyone to get involved to achieve data transparency should be the goal. For this, Autodesk Shotgun is the backbone of choice. It streamlines the data process of any design studio without being overly complicated, allowing each persona to concentrate on what really excites them. Creating, making, or producing engaging products. Yeah, so the process of ideation, of course, changes from person to person, from studio to studio, but the, the fundamentals themselves will never change. So a creative moment can take place anywhere and it's not limited to your standard working hours. And this type of eureka moment can happen anywhere at all. Um, and the first tool to hand is a pen and paper. So digital sketching is traditionally further down the line and it enables the creative type to generate more solidified ideas and variations, for example. And for us, Sketchbook provides the best of both worlds here. Um, exploring and communicating volume, on the other hand, can be challenging with a standard 2D sketch so this is Create VR, as you can see, and this was developed to allow designers to quickly ideate in three dimensions, not just two, which serves as a, a fantastic communication platform for everyone involved in the project. So these previously made 2D sketches are used as a basis for the experimenting and fleshing out of different 3D forms. The concepts are compatible with Alias, of course, and can then be refined once out of the virtual reality world. And as always, we use Shotgun to manage these ideas. Thanks, Danny. The ability to rapidly generate detailed ideas and evolve the concept yourself is a major advantage for a well-rounded designer. Not every designer is competent in alias, much less generates class A surfaces. But when we introduced sub-D modeling into alias a couple of years ago, many designers adopted the technology rather than relying on others to create models for them or modify them. Sub-D modeling in alias generates NURBS limit surfaces that work seamlessly with the standard NURBS geometry in ALIAS. Trims, drafts, fillets, panel gaps, they all maintain history and this hybrid bridge solution allowing us to generate designs quickly and easily, reducing the reliance on other people, streamlining your workflow. Thanks, Rob. Um, whether this is hybrid modeling or computational design, ALIAS gives you the opportunity to use whatever method you want to create with. Additionally, if you do use another piece of software, you can use FBX as an exchange format to maintain fidelity between your subdivision model and where you're moving it to. So being able to transfer creases and carrying on working inside of Alias is incredibly advantageous. This can be managed with our new reference manager updates, which also support subdivision modeling or even shotgun. Just think about it. What happens if it is possible to control your pipeline with the tools you want to use with the functions you want to share. If that's history replace or tools you create in Dynamo, 
and then for them to be automated in your pipeline, everything you try and do is pretty much out of the box with our solution. Reviewing changes virtually takes place on a daily basis, and it should be quick, easy, and ideally to scale. Naturally, this is unfeasible to do with the hard model and would be very costly indeed. Alias View in VR brings designers into the immersive world where they can get a real feel for the model, its proportions, its scale. No need for the clay to be milled. They look, can look at it any time. Incorporate changes or tweaks. Work with the modeler to make changes live in the session. With no ambiguity or miscommunication. And I think especially over the last year, we have noticed that we all need to be able to collaborate remotely in a safe and productive manner. And collaboration in VRED, and especially in combination with VR, enables everyone in the design studio to continue reviewing, accessing, and making critical decisions, even from home office. New technologies like um, HMB-based XR or tablet-based Cloud XR might even improve their workflow as they combine the real and the virtual world in the most satisfying way. And we are looking forward to show you more of that later in the session. Yeah, thanks, Simon. I'm certainly looking forward to uh, to seeing that. Maybe I'm a little bit prejudiced, as virtual reality is is kind of my interest. So uh, we've had a good overview there. I think it's time to take a look at some concrete examples. So I'm going to switch over uh, to Robin, and we're going to start discussing design detail and refinement within Alias. So Rob, take it away. Thanks, Danny. The design process has to accommodate changes, even when it should not. Here we can see a designer adding notes in Shotgun to share details with the model. Defining a proportion change where the rear of the e-tracks. To validate this, the model can be altered using a lattice rig to explore the change and do a what-if scenario before committing a lot of resources to update the mainstream model. Much like sketches being developed is another way for a designer to iterate before developing and refining the model and visualizations. Time is always a challenge. We look for new ways of working, new ways to achieve things. Maybe we can take a scan and edit instead. Cutting out elements and details. Adding in th things to create the scoop in a way that the designer can make a judgment of the design. Mix the physical and digital. It can be rendered and visualized. We can be able to iterate the design and refine it. In another situation, Maybe engineering needs an early feasibility model for the, of the clay. This time a scan will not suffice. Here we're using the Alias Retopo tools to develop a digital model from the scan. For engineering to use for packaging, aero and the many tasks they have. Developing a digital model that engineering can use in hours, not days and weeks, is vital to keeping the design program moving and maintaining the flow of information preventing issues later in the program where change is expensive in cost and time. With a digital pipeline or one of the various hybrid approaches, physical changes to the clay can be continually merged into the digital model. This ability is proving to be a game changer that is used more and more. I often get asked, do we think clay will go away? I think from my perspective, no. Clay is here to stay. Tactile interaction with a physical object is still so often needed. Just the way we use the medium might evolve. We know mixed reality technology is developing to fulfill some of all these needs. We've seen some already and we'll see some later on, so stay, stay tuned. As we've seen, last minute changes are something that happens as part of the design process. Refining the design details is important and needs to be done quickly and efficiently. Sometimes stifling the creative process and extending a design program. The ability to accelerate elements of that process can lead to huge time savings. Being able to pick from a list of various used settings related to a particular look or feel or designer is a capability that is incredibly powerful. It enables design models to be matured to meet design needs quickly. Engineering requirements can be adopted with feature replace workflows. The design model can be evolved through class A process to engineering much more effectively without the time consuming process of rebuilding data. Yes, Rob, I love to avoid time consuming processes and especially between Alias and VRED. So both tools are industry standard and the workflow between 
is seamless. So bringing your alias data or your alias ideas into Vuet is a standard process. You can import the alias data as a reference and you have direct access to your NURBS data, but also to all your layers and now to your layer groups. You can also transfer lights and viewpoints between the tools. So set up your bookmarks and alias and review them in high quality from exactly the same camera perspective in Vuet. The materials are also in sync. So work with the asset manager to accelerate your workflow. Just set up assets once, adjust them, and they work out of the box in your process. Automation can make your everyday life more seamless. There is no need for you to do redundant tasks and you can focus on more important things, like keep creating products customers love. Autodesk VRED Core can help you here. It can do a lot of things. For example, VRED Core can automate every step of the process that we have just seen. Import, tessellate, adjust materials, calculate shadows, all this is taken care of behind the scenes. Images can be automatically rendered in best qualities. Standards can be re reused to have the same look for the same surrounding in the same camera perspectives. Automate your process to review your alias data in stunning virtual reality environments or photorealistic real-time presentations. Just imagine to have access to all your data instantly in best view at quality without any extra effort. So automated workflows are the holy grail for our customers. But sometimes there is need for customization. In VRED, you can do this with Python. But which potential do you have to customize workflows and alias? We have been talking to Gigi a couple days ago. Gigi, would you mind introducing yourself and answering that question? Sure. So I'm Gigi. I'm the QA manager for automotive products in, uh, in Autodesk, and I'm also a Dynamo enthusiast. Dynamo has been added uh, some time ago to Alias, and it allows you to customize uh, workflows. So it goes far beyond patterning its main test, but it can also do a lot of other things. Thanks, Gigi. So um, let's take a look at an example. So we thought about it would be great to exchange data in real time from BRED to Alias using Python and Dynamo. And we open the Alias data in VRED to review it in higher quality. And in VRED, we have the possibility to work with Python. So we created a custom script which allows me to draw directly on the 3D surface. We thought it could be interesting to communicate ideas via um, back to alias. So it would be interesting to um, get access to this information in alias. Yep. So all we need is that information being written to disk and then Dynamo can read it from there, create the needed polylines and directly live send them to alias. So we can do this with Python. So we can export each coordinate of those lines into a text file and we are OneDrive. We can share the information directly with you. Right. So I'm going here into Dynamo, clicking on the browse button, going to the shared location, opening the file and you can directly see how this is read, um, read into Dynamo and therefore also into Alias. That's pretty cool. And you've mentioned it's even working in real time, right? That's correct. So let's just say we would like to communicate that we want to move the panel gap over here. Also, I'm also making the square. I'm drawing a, an arrow. Then I'm drawing another arrow over here. Yep. And as you can see, this is already live updating. Did you say that's really cool? So um, I guess as a summary, so we can use Dynamo and Python to customize workflows in Alias and VRED to create solutions that exactly fit my need. That's Thanks, Gigi. Happy to help. Interesting capability we've just seen from Gigi and Simon. I think there's as many applications in other places that we've fully yet to explore. If we take design, class A, and engineering, we're often siloed and work on, on autonomously, never truly in a harmonized workflow. The need to seamlessly reuse data and accelerate programs and is leading automotives to look for better ways. Where data flows seamlessly, design data is evolved, not rebuilt, barriers are removed between design and class A. Workflow is critical. The right evolution of design data and process means design models can be matured through the design to class A. Gone are the days 
when you can scan a clay, cut sections and surface the model entirely from the scan and section data. Design models can be built reusing existing primary surfaces. Design data is refined and evolved without loss of design intent, without significant time saving. We've seen instances where development times can be reduced by up to 50%. Companies can be efficient with their resourcing. Sure, you can ask a designer to do Class A, and not every modeler has the right skill set for Class A release. But with the right people, process, and training, elements can be shared and efficiencies gained. We've been talking about increasing efficiency and democratization at the AAF this year. What does that exactly mean to an A-list modeler? Well, repetitive tasks lend themselves to some kind of automation. Imagine modeling every element of this front end by hand, all those details, and then it's quite a job, but then at the end of it, you might have to make changes. This is where automation can really help. Integration of Shotgun is one of the tools that helps with communication, tracking files, managing tasks, and automating processes. Here you can see fillets, flanges, gaps, and closeouts being defined in one tool, the panel gap tool, which automates all of these elements into one genre creation place. We can use the feature replace to swap out different design details to explore them further and look at them. Alias has many powerful surfacing tools similar to this to help designers and modelers and Class A teams control the details and features to refine the design. Corners are a particular element that needs specific attention and control. Looking at these fillets, there's many on here that would take 10 minutes each. So you can imagine there's quite a lot of effort to put all these fillets in here. But with the corner blend tool, we can automate that process with a few clicks. Create the corner blend, adjust it and refine it, and with a click of a switch, turn on Trim Convert, which converts all of the fillets the Trim Converted back to natural surfaces. Really important. And then we can refine the fillets further to refine and improve the quality of this to make sure that we get the best result. Imagine the effort needed to adjust all of these details to get the front light details in this, this vehicle correct. You need some automation, you need some repetitive tasks to be simplified and made quicker. Rob, cheers. So if we talk about collaboration and we move on to a product like Shotgun, I wanna focus on the toolkit workflow. How this integrated in your apps, how we can follow IT requirements, and how the UI is the same throughout all the tools, and how you can publish to Shotgun without actually opening the tool which it's integrated in. And we can speak about that more later, but in short, with Toolkit, you can access all data inside a tool you're using. And so you see here, we're tracking the concept phase of modeling, and there are certain things we need to get in Alias right away, like sketches. So we're gonna drag and drop them in, use the publish tool, and when we do a publish, you can share that with your team and you're able to integrate that inside of Alias and then that has history and it's tracked. So if there's a change, then you'll see it. Also, when you work inside of Shotgun, every time you make a change, you wanna share that with your team. We do a publish and then you move that through variations with inside of Alias. The cool thing is we can set up variants, which is contextual to Shotgun. So here, I wanna publish all the variants directly into Shotgun when I do a publish, which means when I go and do a review, I'm able to come in, take a look at the history, take a look at all the variants, which have been published, and then I'm able to make comments and make non-destructive changes to what's already been made. So give feedback on annotations, if it's text, if it's pictures, etc. And this is super important, especially when you move to other pieces of software. So at the moment we're in Shotgun and then we're gonna move into VRED and then we're going to go with the Shotgun integration, load that alias file inside of VRED and I can see all the versions if I need to, I can see a single version, but what's more important is that I can see the history of what's happened with inside of alias with inside of VRED. So when I import this in, I can track changes of what's happened uh, from any piece of software. So since there's been a change, I've published into Shotgun, it will be then updated, which gives me confidence that the ability to see any changes coming in from Shotgun and the same thing here are gonna have the same UI. 
and then you can just make a publish inside of VRED and follow on to the next step. Thanks, Dan, for that update on Shotgun. And I think for reviewing and collaborating, that's pretty uh, exciting stuff. I mean, sometimes you need to go a little bit deeper on the visualization side of things when you're identifying potential servicing problems uh, in class A or in um, perceived quality. So let's say that you've, you've modeled your model and you want to do a surface analysis. And there's some pretty good tools with this, but you're always doing it in, in OpenGL, so on a tessellated surface. And it's quite difficult, although not impossible, to find a potential mistake in this render mode, uh, but it's not the ideal way. And if you don't want these problems happening um, and then showing up in clay, then you would use NURBS ray tracing. So we're using um, a very, very accurate mathematical representation of the NURBS surfaces. So here we've identified a problem on the top left, which would be impossible to see in the other three render modes. We fix that problem now by simply pulling a few curves and CVs, and now the problem no longer exists there. Um, so for NURBS ray tracing, um, we're, we're using ray tracing. So I think we need to be able to scale it a little bit more um, if we want to get real time um, performance. So we're going to go to Simon who's done some tests on scalability within ray tracing and ask him yeah, what he, his observations were. Yeah, absolutely, Danny. I think ray tracing can always be the bottleneck as it requires some hardware resources for exact calculation. I mean, of course, you, there are ways to fake ray tracing or just use parts of it, reflection only, for example. But for a reliable, full global illumination that you want to use to base your decisions on, only better hardware can help to accelerate the time to resolve. And I think it was quite impressive um, how much was happening in that area over the last over the last years. And so we did some comparison benchmarks in different machines here at Autodesk and also with the support from Amazon. And of course, a benchmark is always quite challenging due to different data, complexity, expectations, resolutions, interior, exterior, still frame, real time. So what you will see in the upcoming graphic is the frame rate in an automotive interior and the height of the bar shows the performance in relation to other machines. Let's just take a look. So as a start, we are taking Robin's notebook, which is rendering on the CPU and is giving a decent result already. And of course, a workstation with a dual CPU, like James or my workstation, they are faster. VRED offers GPU ray tracing since one year, and this was boosting the performance on Florian's workstation with two RTX 6000 cards. And um, we tried to benchmark on AWS instance, and surprisingly, the G4DN instance with four GPUs even performed a bit better. GPUs are evolving fast. So the new generation A6000 helped Michael to render a lot faster compared to last year. And we all might remember what we showed last year with a Porsche Taycan, where we showed the power of eight GPUs. Danny, I think that's your home office cluster. That's my baby there. Yeah, for sure. And uh, that's a great little piece of kit to have at home. Trust me. <laughs> and surprisingly, a single instance on AWS with eight GPUs um, already performs equally good. So we took five of those and they performed also pretty well in a good scaling. And the same goes for 10 instances of four GPUs. So scaling this up again and going for 40 of those instances where we had 160 GPUs in the end, we were quite happy that we achieved a pretty good scaling. And we think this graphic shows how exciting current times are. So real-time performance is constantly increasing. So we are looking forward to finding out more. And as said before, all benchmarks are quite individual. We suggest you to find out your own requirements and needs and test your own limit. Let's talk about review for a little bit. I mean, how to review with VRED, how to sell an idea, how to share thoughts or ideas with somebody else. We've seen VRED being used on the desktop, and you know it can be used also in VR, but you can also share VRED scenes with everyone. You can just share a VRED Go file, which is an executable that automatically stores all relevant information in a single file. It can be opened and reviewed on every Windows PC, even with a virtual reality headset. And there's no need for a VRED installation or a VRED license or any tokens. Um, you can just execute an export. VRED Professional also offers streaming to a web browser. All you need is to provide a link to your session and it can be reviewed in collaboration. You can scale that with VRED Core. Just imagine the potential of accessing your VRED scene in a web browser. Think of the potential. 
to combine this with the flexibility of web development. We learned about the power of the cloud some minutes ago. So VRED Core enables you to access any of your VRED data from everywhere and on every device. It is also great to see the e-tracks directly on the tablet. VRED Core and HTML can provide a front-end solution that supports the storytelling of the product and can combine pre-rendered hero images and the real-time power of VRED. So VRED Core enables you to access any of your VRED data everywhere and on every device. And not to forget, Lucas mentioned it earlier, I can also just strongly recommend the presentation of RCD, who are combining the power of Shotgun and VRED. So to review VRED data in high quality directly from Shotgun. That's great stuff, Simon. Um, so reviewing, as we've just seen, reviewing any sort of design, well, it can take place in many forms. And let's move from the screen, uh, uh, the tablet, to head-mounted display and collaboration, because it's quite a logical step. So features are to be there, there to be changed and discussed, details reviewed and evaluated. So the key stakeholders need to be involved and up to date at all stages. So ideally, it would be done in one to one scale with Clay, but it's going to be um, a little bit further down the development line. And um, with the VR review, you can see the collaboration in one to one scale here for proportion and volume is very, very simple. And VRIT supports many, many collaborators in the virtual reality world. So it's quite simple to set, set up, as you can see here. You load a model, you connect through an IP address, and it's just one click. And going into virtual reality, exactly the same. It's one click. So it's all out of the box, and it's there's no programming or optimization. So I guess we should just get together and uh, jump into virtual reality. So let's put our headsets on. Um, so the interior of this Genesis design aviary is, is quite special. It's a social place to meet, so that's what we're doing. We're reviewing, we're changing animations. Uh, we're even drinking a virtual beer, beer together, which is uh, quite cool. Robin being in the UK and the rest of us being in Germany. And looking at the details, it's very, very easy from, let's say, the charging station that we're looking at here to the wheels. And this user experience is, is really rewarding. It's engaging and it's, it's quite wholesome. And it's great that you don't necessarily need a VR headset to be part of the collaboration. So also manager with a tablet, for example, can participate in that too. And then the comfort of his own house, a home or office as the VRED streaming app is collaboration ready. Perfect. So virtual reality is one thing. It's, it's really incredibly useful. And we've been using it for the last four or five years. It's relevant for understanding 3D forms, but there are some major, major sea changes and that's in the form of extended reality. So streamed like Cloud XOR from NVIDIA or tethered on a HMD like the Vario XOR3. And we started testing at home, as you can see here, 600 million polygons, 20 cars in the scene, no clones, no references, um, brute force, global illumination, as you can see here. So we're streaming full GI over the cluster and seeing the reflections, indirect illumination, all the trims, uh, bells and whistles of global illumination. So once those tests had been done, you know, it was a little bit gimmicky in my home office, we moved to the garage where we had a controlled lighting situation and we ran Cloud XR there. And it's really stunning quality. You know, the natural movements of how you look at the surface of a car is great. We wanted to build on that. And for that, we brought in two Vario XR3 um, head-mounted displays and we use them in collaboration as well. So you've got two people, they can see each other um, and they're not completely immersed in the virtual world but they have the augmented um, view of the car being there, or at least believing that it's there. And then our personal highlight, we, uh, we hark back to the, the video that we did for GP ray tracing here with the Porsche Taycan. And I think everybody has to agree that it looks absolutely gorgeous in the garage here. Um, you know, the scale is great. The tracking is fantastic. And then one day, Myself and Simon decided the weather looked nice. Why don't we put it into a real, real world situation? So we parked it at the front of Simon's house and, you know, changing variants is, is perfect. I mean, it, it just looks crisp and wonderful. I think it fits to my house quite well. I think it fits to my house better, but I live in the city center. So there was no chance of getting a free parking spot there in front of the house. But I think the advantages of these types of, of um, collaboration and be it virtual reality or extended reality 
um, they're really complementary, and I think it's something that Autodesk Tools and in particular VRED uh, does extremely well. So we're at the end of our presentation on the Agile Design Studio. We really hope you enjoyed it and found some insights into the way Autodesk can support your processes with our outstanding tools and workflows. Thanks so much for watching and enjoy the rest of the AIF. Bye now. Bye-bye. Thanks, bye. Thanks a lot, bye.